Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about the difference between file history and the backup and restore tool in control panel when it comes to file level backups. All right, so file history is used for file and folder backups, whereas backup and restore you can use it for file and folder backups and also to create a system image of your entire computer. But we're going to be talking about the file backup aspect of it. So we did a video on how to do a system image backup using this tool so I'll put a link in the description for that in case that's what you're looking for. Alright so to start off here we have a little comparison chart talking about the differences between the two. Alright so file history when it comes to file level backups we'll do incremental file backups. We'll backup and restore. We'll do full system image plus file level backups. But like I said we're just going to be talking about file level backups. So what does it back up? So file history backs up your user folders such as documents and pictures, etc. And then the backup and restore can do the entire system once again or selected files and folders. So you could actually choose which ones you want to back up. And then when it comes to scheduling, uh, file history does it on an hourly basis. By default, you could change that if you don't want to have it done every hour, which I think is too much to begin with. And then for backup and restore, it's customizable if you want to do daily, weekly, monthly, and so on. And then for storage options, file history, it needs to be on an external drive or network location. For whatever reason, they don't let you back up to an internal drive. I guess maybe in case your whole computer blows up or something like that, you'll lose your backup. But then again, backup and restore lets you do internal or external drives and also network shares. And then for recovery options, you could restore previous versions of files. So you just go back to that date that you want to restore a file from. And then for backup or restore, you could restore files as well or your full system image. Now when it comes to complexity, file history is simple and user friendly. Uh, backup and restore is a little more advanced and flexible, but I wouldn't really call it too difficult to begin with. All right, so to get to these, we're going to go to Control Panel. And you can see here we have the backup and restore Windows 7. They call it Windows 7 because it's been around since Windows 7. They just never changed the name. And then we have file history. So let's open file history first. All right, so this is backing up to an external drive here. So you can turn it off from here once you have it running. Uh, you can run now if you want to run it on the spot instead of on the schedule. And then if you have a different drive, you could find your drive here. Or add a network location. You can exclude folders as well if you don't want a certain folder backed up or an actual entire library if you want to exclude a library itself. If we click on add here we could pick one of these libraries and exclude it from the backup. Then we have some advanced settings here. So right now the default is to save copies of files every hour. You could change that up to daily at the most and then how long to keep them forever is the default and then I like to do until space is needed so it doesn't fill up and then not back up at all because if you pick this option it'll just overwrite the older backups and then of course you can clean up your backups as well all right so once you run the backup or have it running for a little while so this has only been running today uh, you could go to restore personal files and then you could kind of go back and see your various backups. So this one has a couple backups for today. Then you could right click on one and preview if you want. Then if you click this button here, it will restore it to the original location. And then you could actually search for files here as well. And then we have some settings here too. If you want to restore or restore to a different location, you could do that. Change your views and set up file history, which will take you back to the main setup screen and so on. So you could see how it does different backups based on the time period here. So it's kind of good if you want to have uh, various options to restore you know, certain files from certain dates and then only have the option to restore that file from the one backup. All right, so that is file history for you. Let's go back to control panel here. All right, so now we're going to go to backup and restore Windows 7. And you can see here we have an option to create a system image of the entire computer 
or create a system repair disk to restore your image, but to do the regular backup, you want to click on Setup Backup. And you can see it hasn't found a backup to restore on this computer because it hasn't been ran. And I left it like that so it gets set up a new backup. So we click on Setup Backup. All right, so now it asks you where you want to save it. You can see we could do an internal drive or an external drive, but you can't do the system image on this drive probably because it's not large enough. And then you could save on the network. Then you can also burn it to a DVD if you still have one of those, and assuming it's not larger than the size of a DVD. All right, we'll click on Next. All right, you could have Windows choose your files and folders. So you can see here it's going to save your libraries and the default Windows folders. And it's also going to create a system image, which you may not want it to do. So I would probably choose the Let Me Choose option here. So you can see by default it wants to back up all the user's libraries. So you can uncheck the ones you don't want. You can actually expand here. Let's say we don't want music or videos or additional locations. And then you can see too we have the option to choose other folders from the C drive. And then you can see it didn't put the secondary drive, the E drive, in this list. And that's because that is the destination for the backups. So it doesn't want you backing up files from a drive and then putting them on the same drive that the files are located on for the backup. So you could go through here and just back up, you know, specific items if you want. So this computer doesn't have much on it, but, you know, you could back it like that, for example. And then you can see there's a checkbox here to include a system image backup. So we're going to uncheck that if we're just doing a file level backup. And we'll click on Next. All right, so here is our summary. Backup location is the E drive. Here are the folders that are getting backed up. And you can click on Save Settings and Run Backup. So now the backup is in process. All right, so I will pause the video and let this run, and then we will come back and see what it looks like. Okay, so the backup has completed. It says check your backup results. The backup was completed, but some files were skipped. So apparently I have this option here to back up this folder on the E drive that is on the backup target, so therefore it was skipped. Okay, so here is our summary here. We could run it again. It didn't use up much of the disk on the backup drive. The next backup date. And then it's scheduled for every Sunday at 7. So you could click here and change the settings. Then you have to go through the wizard here to get back to this screen. Change the settings. And you could uncheck this if you don't want it to be scheduled. All right, so now the schedule is set to none. Of course, you could turn it back on if you want or change the settings. And then for restore options here, we have restore my files, restore all users' files, or select another backup to restore from if you have more than one. So if we click on restore my files, let's browse for folders here. So we have our backup of C here. Let's say we want to restore our confidential files folder. And then we could restore it to the original location or a different location. Let's say we're going to do our desktop here. Unfortunately, there's no desktop shortcut up here, so we have to navigate to the user folder. Okay, so that's done. Let's go to the desktop. So you can see it keeps the tree structure for the backup path. And then we have our files. All right, so as you can see, it's, you know, different than the file history backup. I kind of like this better. It gives you a little more flexibility. But if you like to have all those different uh, versions of the backup files that you could just toggle through with file history, you could try that out. All right, so once again, here's our list here of what everything does. So you might want to pause the video and check through this again. And of course, you could try them both out or actually use them both at the same time, too, if you have two different drives to back up to. So I'd probably say, you know, give them both a shot. 
uh, and see how they work for you and then make your decision after you check them both out. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.